the temple of hip hop. Of course, I am KRS One. What we're talking about today is well, we're continuing our read, and as you probably know, this is a um, a special, I should say. <laughs> Nonetheless, this is a special. What we're dealing with. Uh, I am in London right now, and. As I walk to my next location so we can have this read, you should really realize what's going on right now. A lot of things are happening in the favor of hip hop. Hip hoppers are coming together. People are realizing that it's time for us to mature and come together. I don't know if you guys saw the statement by the chief of police of Houston, but we would definitely like to reach out to, to, to the brother and heed that call that he put out. You know, shout out to everybody who believes in peace, love, unity, and safely having fun. These are the principles of hip hop. And again, I say this with all due respect, but when you break the laws of your own culture, the penalty is death or harm or something that you don't want in your life. This is why principles are so, so important. They're not just words or things for you to... Um, you know, just old words like love and mercy and forgiveness and these things. They just, uh, oh, I just say them. No, these, these things are about life and about saving your life. So this is what the Temple of Hip Hop is all about. This is what our read is going to be about today. I'm in London right now uh, getting ready to get it in. Shout out to Birmingham. You know what it is tonight. And so we're going to be reading our gospel, picking up from where we left off. As you know, the Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society. And of course, we believe that to preserve hip hop, you have to preserve hip hoppers. And that's what we're doing. Let's get this started. Invaded us and robbed the town The holiest of temples, they burned them down Now it's in the ghetto, my kind is found Poverty stricken, prison, look, they lock us down The court is a circus, but I am not a clown Take a good look around I am the king My kingdom has been taken from me They disregarded my sovereignty And now they want to say we are free Sings and the word they bring were all captured and massacred like worthless things. It hurts and it stings. I tug against my own strings. Yeah, I feel like a bird with no wings. I refuse to face defeat. Everybody knows they sitting in my seat. But if I could speak, I'd sing. I am the king. My kingdom has been taken from me. They disregarded my sovereignty. And now they want to say we are free. To our little sanctuary you know anywhere the Holy Spirit is that's where hip-hop is that's where God is that's where all good things are you know I, I carved out this little section over here so that I can give this lesson you know while we're on the go as as you know you know uh, these types of teachings these are not, you know, average teachings. And so, you know, I put this disclaimer on this right up at the beginning, right up at the top, that the Temple of Hip Hop, yes, we are a spiritual organization. Yes, we deal with the inner of our people and the inner of hip hop. But realize that this is not religion and this is also not science. This is philosophy, which is the mother of them both. And when you understand what philosophy actually is, you're better equipped to deal with any subject, really. And that's what—that's the basis of our study. You know, when I say, when, when you know the basics of philosophy, meaning when you know how to make the right decisions because you know what's real from what is fake, what is the cause from what is the effect. You know, uh, you, you can differentiate between uh, uh, really reality and fantasy or even right and wrong and things like this 
it's as easy as it is for me to say these things, a lot of people cannot or, or do not have this um, this ability of what is called discernment, the ability to make decisions or make the right decision, uh, or the ability to make decisions at all. And this is what is like underlining what we are talking about when when we're talking with with the lesson we're dealing with here today. We're talking about American history, and what we're emphasizing is character, character. And you know, character, as as we point out, is is it, I'm hesitant to say it's an ability, but in the way in which we're teaching it here, it's either part of your abilities or it is a required ability that you should you should hone in on and try to manifest, because it is one's character that's going to determine what you're going to know, where your eyes are going to look for knowledge what turns you on, what turns you off, it's all going to be based on your character. And like I said in our introduction, principles are not just about words. Love, peace, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, charity. These things are, are not just words. When you really get into the meaning of these specific word sounds, you realize that they're pointing to something much higher than, than what it sounds like coming out of our mouths. And this is what I'd like to emphasize. You know, uh, just this week, you all know, uh, you know, uh, members of the Migos group was killed. Uh, just now, and you know, a week before that, it was somebody else, and a week before that, it was somebody else, and a week before that, it was somebody else. Going all the way back 30 years to Scott LaRock. So now, if, if this is gonna be our culture, a principleless, lawless, meaningless culture. Look for yourself. Look at the facts of where this leads us to. You know, there shouldn't be any, any. You know, like I said, the the Houston police chief was calling out for hip hoppers to come together, and and I'm with him on that, straight up and down. We're gonna, we 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 have to reach out and make sure that that happens. But again, are we really preaching to the choir? Really? Only the good people who understand what the need for unity, they're the ones who are going to come come together in Houston or in, in, in New York or California, you know, wherever we at, Los Angeles, wherever we at. Only those who understand how important it is to come together and, and try to work out ways to deal with our anger or our, our um, mental unfitness, depression, anxiety we're gonna have to come together to deal with this and only the good people understand that so are we really preaching to the choir you know if somebody else can be shot tomorrow somebody else can be shot the next day and and we're still preaching the same message of all oh, man you know i don't want to hear no preaching and it's all about this money and bitches and hoes while real lives are going real lives are going so we start our lesson off with character. We start our lessons off with the idea that character is going to lead you to what it is that you're going to study. Now, in that character piece, we're looking at we're looking at um, American history, <laughs> and um, American history has a lot to teach about character. Uh, and and so we're going to pick up from where we left off. A few uh, a, a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, I actually, um, you know, because we were traveling last week, we played the master class. I hope you guys caught that. And of course, it's on the Temple of Hip Hop dot org website, so you can just go back there and uh, and and get that uh, whenever you need to go back and look at that. We're gonna tweak it a little more and then send it out for twenty twenty three. Uh, uh, that's a free service from the Temple of Hip Hop. To our, to our hip hop teachers. Um, so we're just gonna make that available. If you haven't seen it, make sure you click on it. It's over about a little more than two hours, but it breaks down the teaching of hip hop and the character of the hip hop teacher. So now um, I'm gonna start, uh, we, we, we ended on paragraph 139. Um, uh, we ended on paragraph 139. Um, 
but just before I start, actually, let me go over here to paragraph 137 and make this point about American history. Everyone is responsible for how the United States of America has turned out. As we will see, the true political contest is not between black and white. It is between good and evil. It is between educated and uneducated. It is between the godly and the worldly, the faithful and the fearful, the aware and the ignorant, the real and the fake. This is what I mean about philosophy. Knowing the difference between these, having a discernment, split second, you can make a decision for your good. True American history reveals a true world order of peace, love, unity, and safely having fun amongst all people. True American history reveals the stories of brave white abolitionists, interracial love, white slaves, not indentured servants, black and Native American slave owners, and a continuous civil war between the good and the evil, sometimes between the evil and the evil. Race, as equivalent to our struggle for freedom, justice, and equality, is an illusion. Race loyalty as a strategy toward lasting peace and uninterrupted prosperity is also an illusion. You either stand for freedom, justice, and equality as a person, or you contradict these principles as a person. As H. Rap Brown pointed out, Quote, we must learn that black is not a color, but the way you think. If we are to succeed in the struggle, we must eliminate the significance that we have assigned to color in our community. Among black people, color can have no value, no significance. Commitment, commitment will determine the value of individuals." End quote. That was H. Rap Brown. Black Panther is probably still in prison now. Shout out to him and his whole family. The issue is not even about class, social status, or religious belief at the deepest level. American, American slave history has proven that one's own hatred and ignorance can even manipulate the body of Christ. As reported in 1869, Southern church members owned an estimated 600,000 slaves, human beings. Methodists owned 219,000 human beings. Baptists owned 125,000 human beings. Reformed Baptists owned 101,000 human beings. Presbyterians owned 77,000 human beings. Episcopalians owned 85,000 human beings. With other denominations, it was estimated that 55,000 more human beings were kept as slaves within the body of Christ, the church. As it is also known by any serious historian of slavery that from the very beginning of the slave trade, it was the church that gave moral authority and ethical consistency to the whole institution of slavery. In fact, it was a Catholic bishop that suggested the use of African slaves as a substitute for Native American slaves. Y'all know that story. And if you don't, you should look it up. Slave ships, slave ships bore the names and the captains, of, slave ships bore Christian names and the captains of these vessels read the Bible and prayed every day. To a captured African torn from her family and way of life, the body of Christ looked like a slave ship. But to be fair here, for all the crimes committed against the body of Christ by the ignorant, there were, th there were twice as many good and godly acts of courage and righteousness performed by, by the aware who healed and sustained the integrity of that body, the body of Christ. This is one of the only reasons Christianity exists today it exists because of real Christians. Do you understand? People can do whatever they want all day, but only those that stay true to the principles keep up what those principles are. Only those that love keep love in the universe. I mean, keep, keep love in the world. Only those that are charitable keep charity in the world. 
Those that are merciful, keep mercy in the world. Those that are forgiving, keep forgiveness in the world. Those who are tolerant of other people, keep tolerance in the world. And, and by the way, what I'm pointing out here too is the character. This is what we're talking about. We're looking at religion and spirituality, but if your character is still that of hatred and ignorance and, and, and some sort of uh, whatever it is, if, if your mind is not right, you can sit down, praise Jesus all day and hold slaves. You can sit down and call yourself Buddhist all day and still be a thief, a liar. A rapist. Come on. What is the character? That is the true spirituality right there. And the change of the character is the true enlightenment. Not whether you can memorize own chants or certain meditations or Bible verse. The real spiritual transformation is the transformation of your character. If, need, if it needs to be. Some people don't need a transformation of their character. Some people need a maturing of their character. Meaning you already have a godly character, but you don't believe in it. So it has to be matured and brought up and nurtured and brought up. But still, it's all about your character. Taking care of it, nurturing it, all of that. Let's continue. One story comes to mind of a brave and righteous white female abolitionist freedom fighter named Laura Havilland. She lived in Adrian, Michigan during the height of slavery and was so successful at harboring and freeing hundreds of blacks, whites, and Native Americans seeking freedom through the Underground Railroad that slave owners offered, uh, offered a reward of $3,000 for her capture, dead or alive. Captain Jonathan Walker, a white man, was jailed, fined, and branded on his hand SS for slave stealer. When he was caught helping fugitive slaves get away to freedom on his boat. Abolitionists raised the money to free him, but bad health later caused him to commit suicide. Not only does the story of John Brown and his 21 supporters come to mind, but most recently, like during the Civil Rights Movement, the names of such martyrs as Mickey Schwerner and Andrew Goodman, as well as James Ray, Rayab, Rehab and Viola Lusso also come to mind. Many such atrocities exist in America's true history, and this, is also, and this has also been the true order of the world, man freeing man, man helping man, man sharpening man man respecting man, peace, love, unity, and having fun. This is what the majority of the world is all about. And thus, this is the vision of our ancestors, not just black, white, Native American ancestors, anyone's ancestors with this character. See, this is what I mean about freeing your mind from colonial indoctrination and assimilation. If all you can see and, and identify human beings as is different shades of color, skin pigmentation, then you'll never see like your ancestors. And if you cannot see like your ancestors, you can't be like your ancestors. And then of course, if you can't be like your ancestors, not only are you not continuing your own lineage, but you can't communicate with them either. The communication is not in words, it's in being. So if you can't be like your ancestors, you can't communicate with them. They don't speak English. This language that I'm speaking, our ancestors don't speak English, nor do they see through English culture. They see through our original hip hopian culture. They see through the language that we're teaching right here, which is the language of character. Character. That's the language that's being spoken. Let me continue. And keep in mind, you know, that this lesson is short because I'm on the run, because I'm on the run. Uh, but I want to make sure I got this clear with you on this Sunday that that uh, to impress upon you through American history, that character is what's going to be most important in the building of our nation. If we can't trust you, there's no nation. 
if we can't rely upon you, there's no nation. If, like H. Rap Brown said, there's no commitment, forget a color, are you committed? No commitment, no nation. And that's why we're reading this within the, within the subject matter of American history. A great nation was built, but the people who built America don't get the credit for it. The ones who dissed those people and stole from them and even murdered them and trashed their name. This is who's giving us American history today. And that's why everybody's fed up with the way America is. You know, move your mind from the propaganda and really think about what America really is and what it's really all about. And you'll see that it is not the American system or America itself that is at fault. It's the people who cannot rise to the ideals that built the country. This is a big difference from frowning or shouting at a system and saying, yo, the system is against me. No, the system is not against us. And I'm saying this because you know me, I pull no punches and for 30 years, I've been all about <laughs> pointing out the ills of this system. But as I approach my 60th birthday and hip hop approaches its 50th birthday, we have learned now that yes, there's racism, corruption, and institutional racism. But none of that is more powerful than a unified group of people with a plan, period, period. Nothing is more powerful than a unified group of people with a plan. And other groups of people could try to do whatever they wanna do with you. It's not gonna work if you're unified with a vision toward where that unity is supposed to be going. Now, I hope I've been clear over these last two years, even more than that, but you know, as we've been reading our gospel, I hope I've been clear with how, how we are supposed to be conducting ourselves. And even over two years, as I, as, as I try to make myself clear, we still have members of the Temple of Hip Hop that are inactive. You've been on the call for two years. You've known me even maybe for 10, five years, seven, six years, three years. You, you've been on the calls, you know me, you know what it is, but you're still inactive. You know who I'm talking about. And this, is, and this is what I'm saying. How serious do you take your temple? How serious do you take these teachings? How serious do you take your own time listening to this? Is this just entertainment for you? Like for some people, charity is just a word. <laughs> you know, love is just a word. There's nothing, there's nothing with it. Well, is the temple of hip-hop the same for you? In fact, forget the temple. Is hip-hop the same for you? It's just a word. I'm going to read a little bit, uh, and then we're going to come to uh, our, our, our close. Let me just bring you here, because I, I want to make this clear. What I was reading about was white abolitionists that we never get to hear about freeing black people and Native Americans and other whites from slavery. Why is the story always white people over black people? Why are white people pushing, why are some white people pushing that story when it's not even true? Why is Hollywood pushing that narrative? when it's not even true. More white people were fighting for black freedom than there were slave holders. Slavery was 4% of the population, slave owners. Only 4%, you had that money. Everybody else was either being enslaved or was fighting against that. So why are we not getting that history? Well, let's continue to read. But as many Americans would learn over many hard years, you cannot want for yourself that which you are not willing to give to another. You cannot expect to want life without first giving life. You cannot expect to live free while enslaving others. You cannot expect to hold on to universal concepts with greedy material grabbing hands. You cannot serve two gods. In due time, you will achieve neither. And so, the great pillars of freedom, justice, and equality set up by 29 men of color and 27 others making up the laws and philosophies of the United States of America crumbled under the weight of America's own disobedience to the laws of nature and nature's God, a blatant contradiction of its own principles. This is it. This is what we have to, 
This is what we have to um, adhere to in the building of our own nation. This is what builds nations, and this is what destroys them. This is what strengthens nations, and this is what weakens them. How close the people are to their own principles. How consistent they are. How committed they are to their own principles. Such contradictions, however, came with real consequences. White mobs began increasingly attacking African communities in the United States with repeated lynchings, burnings, and beatings of African men, women, and children. The hatred was high. And it was high because in some places like Florida, New Orleans, Mississippi, and South Carolina, Africans were, pow were powerfully part of the land-owning, slave-owning, ruling class of the 1800s. Where's that history? Without the guidance of their godly principles, brother began murdering brother and sister began undermining sister. From 1861 to 1865, the whole of America broke out into civil war over who was going to control wealth, direction, and power, uh, control the wealth, direction, and power of the United States. Americans divided themselves up into a confederacy and a union with Africans in America fighting on both sides. In New York during the 1863 Civil War, Civil War Draft Act, persons able to pay $300 for a substitute were not drafted. Black men were not taken into the army at this time, so they were ineligible for the draft. Most of the people drafted for, for war were poor Irish immigrants who were either indentured servants or slaves or menial, menial job workers. They were of the laboring class, fearful of losing what little they had to an already prosperous African community by going to war, that, going to a war that had nothing to do with them as newly arriving immigrants led the formation. Let me read this one, one, one more time because I'm, I'm thinking about it while, while I'm actually reading it. I know the story. I should just tell it to you. But let me read what's, what's actually here. Fearful of losing what little they had to an already prosperous African American com African community by going to a war that had little to do with them as newly arrived immigrants led to the formation of Irish, German, English, Danish, led to the formation of Danish mobs. These people, let me break this down real quick because this, this is not reading uh, uh, fluently or I'm not reading it fluently. During the Civil War, black people were exempt, black men were exempt from the war because they didn't allow black people to fight in, in the war. That would make you a citizen, straight up and down. Uh, but, but Irish, German, English, and Danish men, white men, were drafted into the war, by the way. They didn't willingly go to the war. They didn't, have, they didn't want to have nothing to do with the Civil War. They just wanted to come in America and, and, and live. But nope, you had to pick a side. So these white men were being drafted into the into the the, the Union Army, uh, actually probably on both sides. Let me uh, look at that. But it might have been the Union Army being drafted into the Union Army. Um, it basically was a death sentence, <laughs> basically, uh, and they didn't want to go. And and if you went and was killed, or you uh, or you went and never came back. Your family, your wife, everybody would either have to leave their situation or, or shack up with one of these black people and start a whole new family situation. And so these white men began to revolt. And that broke out into a crazy revolt. Let me read this to you. These are the newly arriving immigrants, okay? Irish, German, English, and Danish mobs. This is what they turned into a mo uh, these mobs. Um, burning and bombing African homes, lynching African men, and terrorizing African women and children. When the riots, which lasted for four days, ended, a thousand people, mostly Africans, were dead and property damage was estimated at two million. This would be the first of like um, the Wilmington uh, uh, massacre, um, Haiti massacre. Uh, Tulsa uh, uh, massacre and all the other places that are just not known but black folk had little communities going on and these white racists would come in for whatever it is here it's fighting against going on a draft uh, they're going to burn down African American communities because they got to go to war and they don't want to lose what little bit they got to these Africans so let's kill them before we go to war and kill others 
It was crazy. It was crazy. It seems that before the Civil War, Africans in America were becoming increasingly powerful as a body of well-educated and spiritually charged people. Most people of the United States fought against slavery, racism, and prejudice. However, there seems to have been a racist plot amongst the majority of new white Americans, rich and poor alike, to seize power from other whites, Africans and Native Americans, on the basis of race and race loyalty. And, and this was done with violence. And although the new immigrant gangs prayed to their God for assistance in, their, in the victory of securing what they believed were their rights, no one was able to see that without an acknowledgement of God's supremacy over their lives and that of their nation, they had no rights. As clearly stated, and Americans, as clearly stated, and Americans' unalienable rights are endowed by his creator. However, newly arriving immigrants were simply unable to maintain the faith and vision of America's true architects. Ad advancing the universal principles which the United States was founded upon, the universality of man out of many, one. Racism and prejudice seem to have killed the harmony of America's original multicultural, multi-faith vision of itself. Even though many whites did see the contradictions in their own society and even risked their own lives and the lives of their families to correct such contradictions. Still as a nation, the United States continued to distance itself from nature and from nature's God, living with spiritual contradictions that eventually seeped into its laws. Stop here. Because this is now going to go into another section. Let me make a marker here. We're going to stop at uh, 156. Because that's going to start reading newspapers uh, and so on. And um, I'm going to start talking about the Civil War and, and all of that here. But let's stop here. Because like I told you, I'm on the go. And I want to make sure that we get we get through our gospel even while I'm touring. So you're going to see us pop up from time to time every Sunday uh, uh, in different locations. Like I said at, at the beginning of this uh, of this particular session, I'm in London right now. I'm in central London right now. I found a quiet little spot. Actually, it was a nice little spot off the water here, and um, it, it actually works out that I was able to uh, give this lesson. Uh, here, of course, as you know, shout out to G Simone, big up to Sun One, who's actually producing all of this. Pascal, shout out to Pascal, who's also here with us. Uh, well, uh, shout out to you as well, who's also with us as well. JC, uh, with us as well. Uh, everyone's here in London, and we're planning and getting things started. Um, just so you know, you might have seen maybe on my Instagram or maybe it's out or, or already, but we started cutting commercials, uh, started cutting commercials. Uh, um, we're monetizing sound check. We're broadening the VIPs. Um, uh, it, it's, it's madness. Uh, we just came from uh, an equipment store. Uh, I bought this controller uh, where we're going to be uh, the show is not going to be the regular show with a DJ and an MC. It's going to be a free for all where I'm going to be DJing and MCing, uh, among others that are going to just be taking turns with the turntable and with the microphone as well. It's going to be a blast. We'll shoot some of it and also have it up maybe for next Sunday or whatever. But we're on our way now to Birmingham. I'm in London. I've been here for a couple of days, uh, actually about four or five days. Been here in London, getting organized, changing money over, getting the contracts together, advancing the shows, doing that, getting organized. But tomorrow starts the show, Birmingham. Uh, that kicks it off. And uh, what, a, what, a, what a wonderful show that's gonna be uh, tonight. So um, um, this is it, uh, KRS-One. The Temple of Hip Hop. Check this uh, this video out. I want all of you to have a great, 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 great evening or day well, from wherever you're watching this uh, actually from. Peace and love.
God chose. God chose us as those who would know when he rose As the one who's supposed to refine and remold At the seed of the soul that would heat and unfold Into seed and be bold Then treat it as gold To know what we hold and what it controls To repeat what was told and never be sold For the price of our soul on this app 55 blood low in hip hop's temple Teach it, preach it, spit in the essential Knowledge that no college provides is their credentials Where everything is truth, fact and existential Teachers of the nation, no need for presidential Highest office in God, far beyond the mental Image of God, God's image what we resemble The great assembly, come witness as we assemble Prophecies, reply to these, inform the own reality For sake of the people, not vanity or salary the real cavalry, we gon' show you in the gallery Immortality, fifth dimension when we battle it Fatality, chop heads of all challenges Insanity, they losing their mind panicking Loss advantages, too busy mismanaging Party candidates, unqualified can't handle it God chose us as those who would know when he rose As the one who's supposed to refine and remold At the seed of the soul that would heat and unfold We quit check, it's a crimeless society Hip hopia, where hip hoppers go for their privacy Debate science, knowledge, our philosophies Study scriptures, records, and astronomy Follow astrology, intelligence, our economy Skills as a requirement to be in this anomaly We are gods, that's God with an apostrophe And we are God, that's God with no apology See a fall, this cause has got him going now Free at large, embark, you know it's going down be a part, don't front, Newark is where it's found Seen as art, no charts, just law of underground Whole city reinvented just cause the guard around No arrogance, innocence, this is the guard of sound We represent heaven dance until the guard is crowned Even then, we repent, knowing that the guard allowed God chose us as those who would know when he rose As the one who's supposed to refine and remold At the seed of the soul, that would heat and unfold Into seed and be bold